Soul Tribe. Welcome to your Divine Guidance Reading, where we are spiritual as fuck. If we haven't met yet, my name is High Priestess Barry, psychic medium and divine channeler, hoping to bring you a message now. Always remember, my messages are candid, unscripted, but they are also timeless, so please... Tap into your instincts. Listen to your intuition. If there's anything that I talk about that doesn't make any sense, totally fine. Do not worry about it. This message may not be for you, but you're always welcome to stick around and enjoy the show. So, um, yeah, I've decided uh, let's let's check in on what 2024 is going to be like. I've been wanting to do a reading like this for quite a few weeks, but kind of given what's been going on in our collective, we still have had to actively remove things out of our reality, out of our, you know, <laughs> remove, you know, poor ideologies from our memory. I don't know why I'm phrasing it that way, but it wasn't quite time. But since we've had the solstice and, you know, now we're, you know, here through Christmas, Merry Christmas for those of you who do like to observe the holiday. You know, I'm going to be premiering this on Boxing Day, which is totally a, uh, you know, a, a common wealthian thing to do. So happy Boxing Day. Now, it is not a chance for, you know, a couple of bros to punch each other's guts out, although I, you know, wouldn't, <laughs> given it could be a big shopping day, it's all things are possible, <laughs> but not all things are beneficial. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Thank you. But as I was tuning into the collective energy and the pre-shuffle, a lot of you have been tired, even for myself, taking this time between solstice and Christmas. It's a blackout period. It's a time for supreme rest, absolute reflection. You know, I joke about Boxing Day, and these days, at least in Canada, it's just another day to go shopping. Like, you know, you got all your presents, and then, you know, you know, you got some money from the grandparents, and so you can go and get a good deal on something. But the original purpose of Boxing Day was um, to take this, you know, three, four, five day period of rest and reflection, you know, spiritual catharsis for some. And then on Boxing Day, like once you've had a chance to celebrate, celebrate each other, celebrate your Self, then you can take the time to realize like you know you got excess things around the house it's a time where you gather some of your excess possessions because you've been able to realign yourself spiritually and be able to donate to those who are less fortunate um so there today's energy today's reading like we're gonna be talking about you know with 2024 uh being brought in i nearly said 2024 and you're getting closed out that's really funny but like what are we going to be closing out this particular season? Because it's been a rough few years for, you know, name all the reasons, but, um, however it is that it's going to work with this particular collective message, this is really you giving yourself permission that it's okay to take care of yourself, that it's okay to rest, that your body might still be in a state of low-key crisis and exhaustion, and the only person who can speak up for yourself is you. But at the base here, I like it. We do have Four of Pentacles. Like, this entire year, 2023, it's sort of like you've been feeling better about withholding your energies without that trope of getting off by being withholding. You know you've been actively seeking change within your life, and You've been, some of you have been getting better at budgeting. A lot of you have been able to find some semblance of stability when it comes to your finances. Others of you have been able to find some semblance of stability when it comes to your soul growth, your soul purpose. And you've been feeling better about keeping things to yourself with four of wands. This is funny. Like, you know, we have this very reserved energy and, you know, I'm just going to keep to myself. And now we have the partiers. So it's it's definitely this huge up, massive down. This is also a card of 11, 11. Um, and I think in some of this is a little bit of anticipation of celebrating the new year. Who do you really want to celebrate the next year with, if anyone at all, but we do have the world. Oh, ha, ah, ah. like it's sort of like this little tambourine right here. It looks a lot like this hoop, which I think this, is this the snake eating its own tail? I don't think it is, but I kind of see it that way. I see a few snakes being strung together for some strange reason. That's a transformative energy, just releasing a previous version of yourself. I think some of you have been having some wacky ass dreams, like something about sacred geometry has become a little bit more meaningful to you guys. And 
It's given you a lot of incentive to close out things when it comes to your home life, when it comes to the people you want to celebrate with, because it's not as though you don't want to, you know, celebrate. It's not as though you don't want to have fun, but because you've been in this energy for so long, it's just sort of like, I don't know who I want to celebrate with anymore. They, they don't get it. <laughs> Do have Eight of Wands, which did show up in uh, very briefly in the pre-shuffle, but this is just having some definitive direction within your life. I do, again, like we have, you know, this circular energy, and even though it's not apparent in this card, it's still circular, and there's a pinpoint even though you haven't been able to prove to anybody else around you that the changes you're making in your life are healthy, good, justified, or even makes sense, giving yourself some permission to be like, you know what? They don't need to know. You know, I have talked about spiritual journeys. They are very lonely, but in some ways, once you get over the loneliness aspect of it, the feeling of freedom actually starts to become more solidified and it's nicer when you don't have to ask permission of anybody to do anything some of this is childhood wounding you know you always have to ask your parents hey mom dad can i borrow the car hey mom dad like you know can i start riding my bike on the street like hey mom dad can i go to my friend's house like we sometimes just didn't realize we kept this habit up throughout the years and we transposed it over to our friendships, over to our spouses and lovers and partners and even co-workers. In a lot of ways, not having to be under the watchful eye of another human being. But there we go, three of wands. Like 2023 has been about removing the stuff that has been distracting, um, distorted, a distorted perspective of what it is for you to find your own soul calling, to feel good about the journey you have been on. Many of you are storytellers and you want to be able to pay forward all of your healing, but you're still a work in progress and there's no rush. Like you're an eternal being. What's a few years of healing things out? It prepares you for the rest of your incarnation, but it also is giving you a really good jumping point for the next incarnation. And you're seeking out the right opportunity because you know you love yourself. You know that you actually are the grown up in your own life and that you only need your own divine permission to go out, seek out healthy opportunities and let nothing else hold you back. So I'm going to be asking a few different questions for um, the reading today and we're gonna be asking the divine like what has been closed out like what's done like what what does this world card actually mean for the collective at hand we'll also be asking what are you what are you actively manifesting into 2024 we could look for any kind of red flags yellow flags or even just to bring awareness what you already know so at least if anything it's a little bit confirmational we'll also ask for a little bit of guidance to see if there are any blockages in the way things that you still need to resolve, look out for, um, or release in order to make sure that this um, new year is going to be, you know, a blessing. And then we'll be looking at the outcome for like the early part of 2024. Like it's hard to divine out like one year, two year, three years. It's doable and I am capable of doing it. But for the sake of we're all human and we're, you know, born to make mistakes. Um, just looking at the first quarter of 2024 and just seeing what it is that you're going to be going into and we can kind of get a long-term projection from all of that. But I did ask the, um, the animal spirit guides for a little bit of an idea where we can go in terms of this reading because at the base, it's take the lead. Finally, taking some ownership for what you actually want within your life. What's underneath there? Know your worth. If you're actually worthy, if you are actually love, not loved, if you are actually love, the embodiment of pure love, because that's what this King of um, Cups is all about. You know, people might have accused you in the past of getting off by being withholding, taking your time, or what's wrong? Like, why don't you want to come out with us? You know, feeling better about, mm, no, I just need to rest. No, I'm cool being right here. And 
eventually people do turn around and realize the value of what it is that you've been doing. But, you know, that's them to figure out, not you. Because at the top of the deck, we have Panther Spirit. Reclaim your power. You've been waiting a long time for other people to get their shit together. And you've been waiting for other people to maybe get the fucking hint. But at the end of the day, despite the fear of leaving people behind or being your own worst enemy. You know, someone left you behind at one point, and I'm really hoping that all the things that you've gone through over the past year, over the past lifetime, recognizing that they had to walk away from you because you were a little bit much for them, and there's something about this turnabout where you're starting to heal, you're starting to feel better, you're starting to take more ownership in your own particular life, and knowing that leaving people behind isn't the cruel act that a past version of you would have accused you of being, woo, because we do have dolphin spirit, this and that are true. Well, this can be uh, a card of playfulness, but it's also just recognizing that pure justice, karmic justice requires us to experience one side of the energy and then go through the opposite of the energy. I was mentioning in the pre-shuffle, um, a lot of the stories that I've been magnetized towards during my time off, I've been doing a lot of, you know, working on my art, I've been watching a lot of reruns, like a lot of TV shows and movies that I loved when I was a kid and a teenager. And I keep coming across stories with doppelgangers, the mirror version of ourselves and, you know, coming across the mirror version of ourselves to realize, why is this person irritating the shit out of me? Whether if you're on a twin flame journey or not, all of us do have mirrored um, energies around us. And, uh, you know, uh, this is such a weird energy to like, I suddenly feel this funnel just being descended on the collective right now uh, i'm hearing spiraling into control like in the past you guys have been all over the place trying to figure out what the hell is what's what's wrong you've been trying to problem solve but there's some calmness within here that um i'm feeling that spirit is trying to really get your attention about is that two truths can be true and you can have great compassion for those who had to leave you behind in the past, knowingly or unknowingly, some of this is past life bullshit, but also realizing that you releasing these people, you letting other people go, it's actually a compassionate motion towards them because your interaction with them is actually getting in the way with their spiritual growth. And this is confirmation with Eagle Spirit that Spirit does have your back that you actually do have your own semblance of freedom to start operating your own way. Not that mean karmic murica kind of way. Like uh, the, the eagle can be a very controversial bird, uh, depending if you're actually from this country or not from this country. The, you know, being an immigrant in the United States has it's been its own mirror universe to see a different version of myself, even through my counterpart, seeing the Americanized version of berries and not being super happy with what I saw, but me also having to realize where I was falling short of um, my own judgments when it came to the idea of what freedom is supposed to be. Because a lot of us can get locked up in the idea of asking other people's permission to do things or even getting their blessing or even confirming that we're doing the right thing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with asking for help or asking from guidance, asking from, <laughs> asking for guidance. But when you have um, your own sense of freedom and you actually do feel like God has your back, the divine has your back, that you are being magnetized to people that will actually give you good information if you absolutely need it, whether that be through, you know, a spiritual diviner like myself or you connecting with deep level soulmates who have actually gone through their own difficulties and they're willing to give you a semblance of mentorship. Um, in their life. And I just saw 34, 34 on the clock. Ooh. So today's energy is like, you guys are tired. So it's going to be interesting trying to navigate through this. It's a very dense energy that a lot of you guys are feeling. So it's going to be important. <sighs> work on some of that breathing, work on grounding, but more than anything, get some rest. Make sure you're finding time for yourself. Reconnect with a version of yourself that you were in love with when you were younger. If there's a version of you that you kind of miss when you were a kid, 
there's a version of you trying to get your attention that'll apply for some of you guys. Um, but before we cut and go straight into the reading, like there's a bit of an emphasis on the last reading that I did, having to face somebody that, you know, you have to speak up and let them know that their behavior has been inappropriate and laying out brand new boundaries. And, you know, having an individual who's not exactly very thoughtfully responsive to your constructive feedback, you know, this Knight of Swords came back and, you know, underneath there, we do have the Ace of Cups, but this is starting to, first of all, have a little bit of recognition where people have been siphoning your energetic resources because you've been giving them so much space. You know, you're a caring individual, whether if it is you want to be a parent or a leader, you know, we want to be able to offer space to people who are having a difficult time, but because you've been getting better about recognizing your own worth and not in that, again, that karmic sense, because you need to start resetting your idea of what it means to be helpful, what it means to be an actual leader, what it means to give constructive, thoughtful feedback that's not enmeshed in traumatic emotion. Feeling better about putting those things aside and realizing who is actually worth your time and energy to help. You want to start paying things forward, but you've been paying it forward with the wrong people. Like, oh, there we go. Something got cut when I when I said that in, in the pause. Like, just a recognition when you do actually cut this energy out of your life and you suddenly feel better. That is your confirmation that you actually did the right thing. Because when we're trying to overcome abandonment wounding, rejection wounding, and we have to be the abandoner and we have to be the rejector, um, you know, that guilt can keep us karmically tied to these people but the more you've been feeling good about just the boundary is the boundary it is non-negotiable the boundary lives right here i'm not moving it towards you but i'm not allowing you to move it towards me this is where the boundary guide lies and just acting as if that's what your life is and you feel better enacting the boundary you got suddenly got a, a wave of energy it's a confirmation to not be so stuck in your head that you're doing the right or wrong thing because the nine of cups right here is a confirmation that you've just been around people who've been pretending to be happy you've just been around people who they wouldn't know happiness if it smacked them in the face and unfortunately for some of the, the people that may be a literal translation especially Many of us within this collective, we are survivors of multiple types of abuse, subtle and intense. And, you know, again, I'm feeling this kind of like if I was to look at the boundary guy between you and this person, it's just, it's no longer about pushing this way, pushing that way. It's no, it's right here, right here. Like sometimes when you're healing, you can get those hypnagogic jolts. Um, and some of that is just your <laughs> masculine energy, just feeling good about punk. Nope, not today, Satan. If you feel better when you cut someone out of your life, just remember you did the right fucking thing. Because after we go to cut, I do have a Knight of Cups and a Ten of Pentacles. This is a lot of that. If I invest into myself and I invest into people that are in my energy, that they can take care of themselves, that they already have a semblance of self-love and self-devotion, that, you know what, separately and together, you guys are both on the right track to create a better future for I'm hearing a better future for each other. But even if this is just you going about your life from your own single perspective, whether if you choose to marry or choose to partner up within a business or, you know, whatever, you know, teaming up with somebody could mean, kind of yeah, the emperor underneath there, you're no longer dedicating yourself to people that they, they feel this way. Like, look how miserable this emperor is. Like, this is the, this is the Debbie Downer. This is somebody that they just, They'd rather just complain than do something about it. And they're actually more interested in talking about how you have it better than them. And it's like, wow, you are a real drain on my resources. Knight of Cups underneath there, Six of Cups. I love it. This is just no longer having to operate with a past version of yourself. A lot of you have been releasing archetypes of yourself, 
past behaviors. You know, I sometimes joke about the village of berries. You know, I got, you know, 20 something berries. I have hyper conservative Christian berries. I've got nihilistic berries, all these different versions of myself. I've finally been able to 1404 or 4004. Wow. A version of me that I've been actually able to detach from my soul. And in many ways, it's kind of like the alternative versions of berries are nothing more than now guide points to help me understand your energy, to help me understand the other people around me. As long as the energy is not intermixed with myself, I can finally be able to be put into a point where, oh, throat chakra clearing, finally be able to put to a point where I can actually communicate with where I am at without concern that I'm going to be retaliated against. Because quite frankly, it's kind of this energy where if someone tries to retaliate against you in this energy, you're like, I'm kind of curious what would happen. Like, it's no longer, oh my God, what if I get dejected? What if I get left out in the cold? What if this happened? What if that happens? No, no, no. Like, <laughs> That version, it's it's over there, it exists, but it's just a past version, an archetype that you don't resonate with anymore. This is you being better about going on different quests in your life, even if they don't seem, even if they don't seem um, ideal from the outside observer, there's a piece of you, it's like, I really like to see you try. Like, I would really like to see you make an ass of yourself. Like, this isn't the, necessarily the karmic version of it. Don't wish harm on anybody else. But this is also feeling so good within your own energy that if someone tries to retaliate, your divine guidance is so solid that you can just work through the energies and in many ways just kind of sit back, just kind of observe rest. Like, in some ways, someone, this retaliation energy that some of you might be worried about or actually in the middle of like whether this is a partner who's like oh, i'm not talking to you like we're not talking anymore like no like i i it's a very toxic form of putting up your boundaries that i'm picking up right now and it's like if you don't do this well i'm sorry we're gonna have i'm gonna have to take this away like ooh, i don't like this character whatsoever but um that kind of person it's sort of like you can kind of detach you know detach yourself sit back cross your arms and be like i can rest and I could just watch you like, you know, like a TV sitcom and it's almost entertaining, but you're not interfering. You're not actually engaging, you are observing. And this is putting into a space where you can start learning. 2024 is gonna be a lot about you becoming observational, being able to take that step back and think, wow, how is my life a sitcom? Wow, my, my life is kind of like an interesting movie. Uh, stories, like I said, are becoming more prevalent because we have all the technology to create all kinds of things really quickly, but where's the substance in it all? So before I go to cut with the Oracle decks, I do the card of compassion beneath there, withdraw. Like again, that's that whole, you're not actually being the asshole that you were afraid you're going to be by taking that step back from anyone who's retaliatory, overwhelming. They, th Anyone who's entitled, when I say entitlement, I, I always struggle with this word because I had been accused of being entitled years ago. It's just a recognition that people who behave with entitlement, they're just traumatized. Four, three, two, one. You know, they need to take a step back themselves. And you pointing out their entitlement doesn't always work out the way you think it should. Because we do the card of the Samaritan, and I am more drawn to the shadow aspect where it says exacting appreciation and recognition for the help that you you offer. These are the people that, well, I did all this for you. And it's like, I didn't ask you to do that for me in the first place. Um, because you've been around people who don't understand their own worth, they manufacture their worth through you. And it's created this artificial tie to this person. And there's a reason why you've been exhausted. They are so dependent on your approval that, um, <sighs> They're so dependent on your approval that they manufacture reasons why you should approve of them. Because underneath that, we do have the card of polyamory. And I do see it in a light aspect where it says, ethical non-monogamy, established trust, trust. We got to show one of our ancestors, the one that doesn't like to have teeth. Um, non-traditional family. Now, you yourself may not identify as polyamorous. I consider this card uh, also to be for the adopted family. Um, you know, having people within your life that are not um, genetically or legally related to you, you know, sort of the, uh, you know, 
the the brothers and the sisters and the you know the lovers and the people that we bring into our life in order to create a sense of refreshed family and you having the chance to finally break that all apart start from scratch because we did have four towers uh, a little over a week ago and that was just no the pillars have come down so you can finally rebuild that foundation because you have been over committed i did cut the card away but it's also in the shadow aspect over committed to too many people too many people trying to say get, like look what i can do look what i can do look it look it look it look it look it look 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 like you know i'm sorry to <laughs> I'm really sorry to bring in this energy like I because I do remember several years ago when I was a teenager um, I remember sitting uh, at church and I was hanging out with um, a little Sudanese kid she was very cute she was like four years old and uh, our church had brought over probably like I think 125 people uh, in order to get them out of the uh, Sudanese war at the time and so our church was basically doing a year-long endeavor to um, bring in these immigrants, bring in these refugees to get them resettled, rehomed, teach them English, make sure they can get access to, you know, clothing, amenities, and even their paperwork so that they can stay legally within Canada. And so I remember being in the nursery with this little four-year-old and she didn't know any other English word other than look it. Like, you know, <laughs> excellent, you know, starting point for any kind of kid. But I, she was doing drawing and I was kind of sitting here and she got really exhausting very quickly, even for myself. She's like, look, look, look. I'm like, yeah, kid, I get it. Like, you know, I'm, I'm looking. It's a very similar kind of energy where people like, you know, a lot of this child wounding that these people have had where they really um, are way too dependent on other people noticing their goodness, noticing their worth. So this energy in 2024 is how do you speak truth, but how do you speak with it with great integrity? Notice that there's some barbed wire uh, along this particular sword. This is recognizing that your word is powerful, but your word is sanctified, finding the balance of making sure that you're not shredding other people's energies. Their energy is not shredding upon you, but being just cut and decisive and not feeling guilty if you actually do need to walk away from these situations, because when you release yourself, you move forward. The diamond in this particular deck is the void not avoiding, you know, a very important talk. Some of you guys still actually will need to do a little bit of karmic cleanup in the early parts of 2024. We'll hopefully get some um, clarifying information as we get into the core of the reading, but we do also have the card of companion and underneath there, <laughs> judge, judgmental companionship, like realizing that you've allowed other people to be judge, jury, and executioner. And now that you've been coming into your own, you know, soul adulting self, people can have opinions and some of them may actually have valid opinions, but you don't need to always take it to heart. If somebody gives you an opinion that makes you feel kind of shitty, first of all, you can sit back and go, was this a valid point of criticism? What can I do about it? And then second of all, recognize it's like, mm, no, that doesn't make any sense. It's just a reflection of them. And in this particular energy that I'm feeling, this is somebody they're projecting their parental issues onto you. Like this isn't just one person you've been dealing with. This is a community. This is a habit. This is a lifestyle. This is a geographical based societal habit that you're learning to overcome and you have to do it solo why because you know spiritual journeys they are very lonely but that said what has been officially closed out for your 2023 so that you can bring in 2024 page of pentacles in the shadow aspect with the hanged one Ooh, like Page of Pentacles did show up with uh, the membership um, reading, and this is a card of self-worth, but it's also realizing <sighs> you're a student of the streets. The Page of Swords can be about theoretically I'm supposed to do this. I learned it in a book. Well, my parents kind of taught me this, or, you know, this is what my friends do. You don't always necessarily question things when you're the Page of Swords, but a Page of Pentacles, it's you've been through it. You've gone through it. The Hanged One, well, sometimes that's about getting another perspective. This one is very much about you self-elected to see something. Like, I'm hearing congratulations. You actually have completed some very difficult work over this past calendar year because you are willing to put yourself into somebody else's shoes 
choose. You were willing to put yourself into the position where you had to be the one who had to reject somebody. You had to be the one that needed to speak up just honestly. Like some people can be a little bit hurt truth, you know, like I speak truth. And it's like, okay, that's interesting. You want to speak your truth in that energy. But also <laughs> just knowing that, you know, I'm just being honest with where I am at. You know, if someone is shredding on your energy. Someone is making you feel less than like, even if you don't have the means to actually speak up to the person, sometimes your words are just wasted with certain people. I have noticed in certain karmic situations, the ones that I've gone through over this past calendar year, it's sort of like, I could argue with you till I'm blue in the face and you still wouldn't see things from my perspective. That's coming back around with this exhaustive energy and realizing that sometimes people, you can just give them the boundary and if they want to make a big, huge deal out of it, like a small boundary and a big molehill, you can recognize now that you can see it from their perspective, but also realizing you don't need to be stuck in their perspective. You learned a lot of things firsthand, I'm being told, with spiritual clarity. Take risk, poet, oh, so, like, speaking up, speaking out. Um, the poet, it says, expresses soul insights in symbolic language. I'm hearing light language. Um, in some ways, there's a piece of you that's had to embrace your own worst enemy, especially when it comes to spirituality, it, depending if you grew up in a spiritual home or not, or a religious home or not. Those are two separate things, by the way. Um, vilifying. It, it's easy for us to get uh, to vilify certain uh, spiritual modalities just because, you know, we had a toxic archetype associated to it. Um but you're finding your voice, like my throat nearly collapsed in on itself for a second. So it's been a bit of this hiccup, feeling bad that you had to speak up or worried, how do I speak up? But this is a little bit of um, overcoming that stage fright. Uh, like if you talk to people who professionally go on stage for a living and you ask them, so what's it like getting out on stage? Like, are you nervous? And they always say yes. Like they can make millions of dollars every year of, of, of having a career that involves them speaking, involves being in front of an audience. You, you know, anyone who does YouTube like myself, putting yourself out there, like that's scary, but it could also be very, um, uh, it can be very powerful. You know, it can definitely, you know, charge up my mojo, but every single time we go to speak up, the first word is always the most difficult. There's a reason why I enjoy having my, you know, we'll call it the opening prayer, the opening spiel, the, the, the spiritual as fuck opening is because I need that moment to warm up my energies, to give you guys a chance to allow your energies to be welcomed into the collective. It's sort of the welcoming at the door. It's like, hey, hi, come on in, welcome. Like, you know, good to see you. It helps warm things up so that we can start getting into the core of what it is that's going on. You guys are finding ways to speak up, finding ways to express yourself, whether if that expression is finally speaking your truth for the first time, especially if you've been waiting for a long time to actually say something very honest to somebody. And it's just sort of like trying to find a creative way to express that, you know, writing letters, I'm suddenly feeling kind of like sad and worried. Like you notice how I'm kind of like a little bit glazed into the distance and a little bit worried. There's a little bit of taking some ownership, but again, this is something that you've closed out. You've actually taken the risk because even though a past version of you might've been worried about speaking up, self-criticizing or worried how other people are going to perceive you, the more you become aware of your soul calling, the your own personal gifts, and there are several spiritual gifts that all kinds of people are into. You know, some of them, it's singing, others, it's writing, for others, it's even finding 
the the ordin orderliness and patterning of the universe through mathematics like even spirographs like you know spirograph spirograph beautiful designs spirograph spirograph perfect every time oh, weird jingles that somehow stuck with me since the age of six like spirographs is math art so there's getting out of this idea of what an artist is supposed to be. If you feel like you can't carry a tune, you're like, I'm not going to be a singer. Well, you got other talents that you can totally take advantage of. We all have our own ways that we can express ourselves in the world. And quite frankly, we can't do it all. Then we'd be perfect and intimidating. And that's lame. I'd rather find people who are really good at something that I'm not quite great at. Because if we're both working towards our sole purpose, well, there is an aspect of the universe that you perceive through your own personal lens that I myself can benefit from and others can benefit from in the grand scheme of things. Like, but because you took the risk and you chose to see things from somebody else's perspective, but you also had to realize that you had to, again, be your own worst enemy this is opening up a package because we just had Christmas. This is opening up a gift. And it's sort of like you spoke and like beautiful doves come out of your mouth. Like there's actually an old Norwegian um, tale I remember hearing when I was a little kid. I've been thinking about it off and on since I was younger. The idea is that, um, you know, a beautiful princess is like, you know, do doing her thing and she crosses a bridge and trolls, they live underneath bridges. And this troll grabs the princess and looks at her and says, I want you to comb my hair. And she's like, ew, gross. I don't want to comb your hair. And he's like, well, if you don't comb my hair, like you're going to, every time you speak, frogs will come out of your mouth. But if you do comb my hair, every time you brush your own hair, gold flakes will fall out. And so I remember being this little kid and my teacher was trying to explain to us, it's like, look, no, troll hair is gross. Like, you know, it's sort of like, even if a homeless person who's not in their best us, you know, they're trying to like panhandle or something like that. Like, would you comb their hair if they asked you to? Most of you be like, no, I value my safety. There's something about the energy of recognizing your, <laughs> some ways your own magic, but the, what kindness is actually supposed to be. It's very weird that I'm picking up the, the, the troll tail because I am seeing like you know being able to do something that you found to be ugly doing something that you thought you never would have to do but there's something with the universe putting you through these specific energies not you going out and finding it the universe orchestrating something for this because there's totally an energy in here who's a little annoyed with me where it's like as though I'm trying to be mean to the homeless and I get why you think that, but that's not what this is. I've been getting a lot of argumentative energy in this uh, collective lately, especially that you guys have been around people who still have their ideologies, their beliefs, but it's really just their hurt. It's just their hurt being expressed. And because you're healing, because you healed, you're able to start healthfully expressing yourself, recognizing that some people will have an opposing opinion. And again, sometimes it'll make sense. Sometimes it's just, God bless you. Go, like, go away. Um, but this is your boundary being highly established because until this, um, you're able to create this energetic barrier, you won't be able to manifest in your highest timeline into 2024. But that said, this has been closed out. Your fear of speaking up. You now have the ability to become prosperous because you were accosted by something that was very uncomfortable, but you followed your divine guidance, got it out of the way, and you never have to do this ever again. That's kind of the nice thing about that particular story that's coming to mind. You never have to do something like this ever again. Uh, so what are you actively manifesting in 2024? Let's get to the good part, guys. Let's uh, <laughs> We got six of swords, seven of wands. Like this is a bit of a confirmation of what I just said. The six of swords can be a bit, a bit depending on your headspace. I just need to get over there. 
I just need to get the year over and it'll be better. And it's like, that's not how energy works. The calendar is nothing more than a human manufactured construct by, you know, Julius Caesar. So, you know, we know how to ship and deliver things so that we can have an agreement on a date and a time. It's a communication tool so that, you know, I'm not talking about three moons from now, like, you know, during the height of the sun and everyone having a very relative idea as to what that's supposed to actually mean. Um, Because sometimes we can get so caught up in just ignoring what's going on around us. Like, I just need to get to the next thing. I just need to get to the next thing. And I just realized on my (laughs) table here, it says 2023 with these numbers. This and that are true, but spirit has your back. Ooh, okay. But it's a bit of a, it's a little bit of a warning, but it's also just a bit of a, uh, I'm hearing a head check. If your boundaries are established right here, right now, you're fine. It doesn't matter what the calendar year is. It doesn't matter when you actually come across this particular message. It could be 2026 and the energies could still apply to you. And so many people are so focused at the end of December, just get me through the end of this year. Just get me through the end of this year. There's a message in here saying, can this year just start now? Like, I think it can, but this, like this energy, it can start now. Why? Because you have been working on developing healthier boundaries. And when you have a healthier boundary, the, the energy to get to the other side, it becomes way more manageable. It actually becomes more beautiful. It's sort of like if you get so caught up in timing things your own way, um, you accidentally can get marooned. It's sort of like you went to go cross the waters, but you didn't go at the right time. And the tide withdrew way too fast. And then you just ended up getting stuck on the shore. But it's sort of like, even if you got stuck on the shore, at least you could see a beautiful sunset. Like I, I, I do keep in touch with my friends from Calgary and this time of year can be really beautiful. Like we sometimes get these pink days where the sky get during sunset especially uh yeah it's always like a winter sunset because it's the longest day uh longest night of the year and it's like 20 minutes everything turns pure pink not not pinkish no pure pink and you can just enjoy it it's there's something very magical about just enjoying the energy that you're in because if you're deciding it's 2024 right now like this is my idea of what 2024 is there's some beautiful colors around you like the landscape is quite lovely within your energy being able to pause and again rest being able to kind of you know we got some beautiful weather going on right now where i am at and like whether if it is you're snowed in or if you're enjoying a little bit of winter rain or you know maybe it's like you know i'm dreaming of a brown christmas which you know that's usually the calgary special growing up like <laughs> it was very rare i had uh, snowy christmases as a as a kid but if it's here and now good You've set the guide point. This is you taking a little bit more ownership of your energies and not necessarily, I don't want to use that word spirit. Come on, give me a better one. But basically not being able to limit yourself. I don't know why I heard the word castration. I I don't know why. I'm very sorry. Like sometimes I get the weirdest words that go through my mind. And I think some of you guys are a little bit distracted for which touche. I, I, I can't, uh, can't judge you. Woo. Let's move forward. Like there's a lot going on within 2024, but because you're still kind of distracted by a few things, I I'm still actually, when I see your looking glass, there's a lot of distortion. So the next, you know, let's get past this. And the next set of questions, I think we'll be able to give you a lot of clarity. We have the weaver and the pioneer passion for doing and creating what has not been done before. This is originality. You know, I was talking about how like with movies, TV, um, even with writing, it's so much easier with a click of a button to tell some AI generated thing to create a novel. Like it is possible to do stuff like it. Doesn't mean it's good, but it means it's easy. And because things are becoming easier to manufacture, like again, we're trying to discover the soul of something. You don't need to be way too overwhelmed thinking that (laughs) 
it's all up to you to be super original. You don't need to get caught up in the future version of yourself, the future version where everyone admires you. People look back on history and they think of you as this thing. Like, just be the person who you are right now because there's something about you being in the unknown. I was saying looking glass. Like, you know, when I look into your energy, there is some distortion, but at the core of it, there's this beautiful heart. And I was mentioning earlier because I did see it with this world card. We have the weaver and the snake that eats its own tail. But in some ways in this context, I actually see you kind of unraveling <laughs> this snake, you know, looking at the snake, understanding the snake, taking care of the snake. <laughs> The sense of self-nurture, because with the two palms, with this energy coming out, I do sometimes see that as Reiki, hands-on healing energy. Um, there's something about you learning how to bless your own work, bless your own journey, bless your desire to explore self. Like we've been so obsessed about exploring space, uh, exploring society, exploring, you know, the latest fan attraction. Don't get me wrong. I love to travel. But this is the going into unknown territories because we haven't lived in a civilization that encourages self-expression. And if self-expression is not expressed in a very specific way, like you get um, demonized. And like I'm hearing overcoming propaganda, overcoming fascism. And fascism, in my definition, is nothing more than not being able to have not being able to have an opposing opinion in a healthy space. There's something about the way that you used to limit yourself because you didn't want to be judged, you didn't want to be hurt, you did not want to be bullied, you did not want to be ostracized, you did not want to be, you know, we'll just say metaphorically castrated. Um, for just being yourself, like, because you've gone into hiding, the more you withdraw your energy, you have a lot less opinions around you to tell you how you should and how you should and could act. Because when the opinions are gone, it opens you up to a well full of opportunity. And no, you're not the Yuma bomber. Like there's like some energy in here where it's like, well, I'm really afraid that like, you know, you know, this idea, like if someone goes missing and like they come back and they're like a psycho killer, first of all, you need to look at that. Like it's okay to acknowledge that you have a psycho killer tendency within your own system. I have been picking up doppelganger energies like different tv shows i've been magnetized to where there's like the mirror version of somebody um you know and there's nothing worse than encountering yourself and realizing how you're like wow i am really fucking irritating and having to really recognize your shadow aspects of self especially when you see that being per, um, projected and reflected by people around you but this realization, the self-reflection, because the heart, like our human hearts look like this, but we had two hearts together. And this is how we get this particular shape, recognizing your yin and yang, recognizing the person that you present to the world versus the person who you actually are. It's nobody else's job to point out your shadow. First of all, it can be a little bit rude unless you've actually asked somebody to look at your shadow, but a lot of people ignore their own shadow because they think it's negative thinking. There's a lot in here, but when it comes to actively manifesting something into your life, I am being called to pull one more energy just to help feel a little bit solidified. You guys are still trying to tune yourselves in. I'm going to grab the moon, which is get a card here. Like, okay. Like, like what's the, what's the one thing that I, you know, I can tell. Okay. There we go. Isis cast spells, protect, heal. Vision, get clear on what you want. This is coming up with your own sense of protection, realizing that not all of your ideas are ready for public consumption and that you can just have fun. Like you can post stuff online if that's what you're called to do, but just do it like as though you're presenting your journal to the world. It is not for other people's critique. It is just for your own personal documentation. If other people are interested in following you along, great. That can be one metric that you can work with, but if you're not entirely certain what it is that you want, you have to uh, face a few things. And, you know, we can call on Kali energy. Like, you know, she comes with a warning label and a machete, but it's a step into the unknown. Do not be afraid. There's a version of you that's become your own worst enemy. I keep saying this over and over again, but that version of you, that shadow version, continue to protect yourself because 
when you don't have karmic interference, you don't have distortion, and you're going to be able to come into your own healing, your own protection, because I am seeing this as also scorpionic energy. Like, this is protecting your emotions, but it's also death rebirth, being able to finally put aside a previous version of yourself and finally let it go. Letting go of the, for some of you, the partying, having to prove to other people that you're on their side by going along with whatever it is that they're doing. You're going to be encountering new communities, new lifestyles, um, and also being able to forge healthier alliances with those who are on your vibration. But as long as you're entertaining anyone lower vibrational, even if it's just, okay, I'm just going to sit here and let you shred on my energy until you go away. And then they never go away. This is like not allowing people to siphon off of you anymore because you're a power, powerful mofo. Like there's this piece of me in here, like that's still healing out. It's kind of this little shy kid energy that I'm picking up. And this is the, the shy kid version of you where it's like, Okay, can I go to my room now? Are we done with this conversation? Because this is going nowhere. Like, Divine, get me out of here, please. Like, <laughs> save me, Batman, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> so that said, like, what are the blockages that need to be released? Because you're bringing in something beautiful and amazing, but there's still something attached to you that's siphoning from you. <laughs> King of Cups, Page of Pentacles. Oh, that's amazing. So yeah, you know, this is what was showing up with... Um, you know, what you have closed out. Um, and then we also had this King of Cups show up in the pre-shuffle. Like, again, this is not depending your own journey, your own story, and not giving it over to people who already have a sense of distortion. This is you creating a new collective, starting with you as the focal point of that collective, not being like, you know, a cult leader. Again, like we're not talking about starting a cult and knowing the difference between starting a cult. If you're somebody, uh, uh, one, 1101, if you're someone who's into studying cults and like, you know, would be like the Mansons or the, oh, I'm totally blanking on the name of the cult, but they are the ones in Oregon. Uh, but this idea that if you are mag magnetized towards stories about cults, well, there's something in there for you. Like, whether if it is you are a cult leader in a past life for which, you know, no judgment, you know. <laughs> I feel like a few of us might have gotten a little megalomaniac in our past lives. Like, we learned better, but we're afraid of becoming that person again. Um, but no longer having to give ourselves over to um, people that they say they know best, and it's putting energy into people's lack self-worth. You know, talking about people where they're always whining, they're always annoyed, they always have something to bitch about, they never stop venting, and they always require your personal attention. Um, and realizing how much it has been a huge energetic drain. This is finally taking some ownership. Now that you've seen thing from the something from the opposite perspective, this is a very empowering perspective, it is activating... Um, it is activating your spiritual gifts and that spiritual gift all comes down to, yeah, I'm just going to take care of myself. I'm going to express from a place of love. If there are people who don't appreciate it, you know, send them high vibing energy and then wish them well, send them on their way. I just saw one, two, three on the clock. This is helping you move forward. A pillar and the healer. Whoo! Yeah, this is investing your energy into the wrong people. I have talked off and on about consent. You can't heal somebody without their consent. And to some degree, um, yeah, okay, yeah, you cannot heal someone without, without their consent. This is something that um, I've struggled with before in the past. And realizing that if you're in a situation where you're not quite comfortable, it's sometimes tempting just to be like, oh, just send in some positive energy, positive energy, positive energy. But that drains you as opposed to it's okay to protect your foundation first. It's okay to... First of all, just ground yourself, put yourself into the ground, being able to feel connected to the earth, keeping that solar star chakra, um, you know, health, healthfully connected so you can have the flow of the universe going through your body because that is healing. Because if you, if you have anybody within your energy that's draining you, first of all, 
they're not connecting themselves to their own divine self and they don't have the ears to hear. Trust me, you tried, whether that's giving them space, giving them a lecture, you know, giving them money. Like some of you have been dealing with moochy people, people who, you know, they borrow money. They always seem to have an, uh, an excuse and they never quite repay you and you have to hunt them down in order to pay you back. It's that kind of thing. And energetically, this could mean, again, just feeling tired. Like, you guys are exhausted right now. And during this period of time, like, if you're still dealing with this exhaustion, you need to sleep. Because even as I'm feeling into this, like, there's some shanking energy. Like, I'm feeling, like, knives trying to go through my back. You have people who are backstabbing you because um, you're no longer feeding them. Like, you know, whether it be... You're no longer their drug provider. <laughs> That's literal and figurative for some of you guys. It's sort of like, you know, I cut off your supply, supply of money, supply of weed, or even having a, a, a free place to stay. This is someone who's overextended their welcome. And you really thought at the time you were doing the right thing to give them a chance to grow up, a chance to heal, but they never did. They never took ownership because in the shadow aspect, it says taking advantage of those who need help, failing to care for oneself. These people are not taking care of themselves. They always expected you to take care of them. But again, you might've been this person, you know, at some point or another, there's a little bit of humble pie that, you know, a few of us are eating in this particular energy, but this is just, you know, you've gotten through the hard part. Like you've gotten through the hard part. You're on the right track. And any kind of um, situation that gets remagnetized, it's just nothing more than the universe being a perfectionist in terms of how it is that you need to govern your own energy. You have some powerful things that you will be able to start speaking publicly to the world. Like I've talked a lot about this, you know, Pluto transit into Aquarius, which will happen on January 20th, but this is where your pioneering energy comes in. And that um, planet will stay in that sign for 20 years. There is no rush. There is no timeline to your healing, where if this is recovering from trauma, um, like emotional trauma, spiritual trauma, but many of you are autoimmune compromised and still trying to work through just your basic health. Your body is essential to your spiritual ascension and any kind of person who's trying to gain your sympathy while you are physically exhausted, they are being selfish and you're feeling a lot better about releasing them. You figured it out, they can figure it out. And there's no reason to feel guilty about it anymore because you are a healer. And as you heal, your gifts become more apparent. Other people's pain actually becomes more visible. And your self-worth will give you a reason to know when a true energetic exchange is actually happening. You know, even as a diviner myself, like I'm very cautious about the people that I try to give spiritual wisdom to, um, because not all of my, uh, not all of my messages are necessarily paid, but I do have friends where we're on the same wavelength. We have different journeys, but we're, um, we vibrate at the same level and that they can give me readings that are useful for me. I can give readings for them having that healthy energetic exchange. But even one of the nicest things that someone said to me, uh, I think a little over a year ago, when I was still in my kind of past life and working through a lot of my karma, you know, I was doing tarot readings at sex parties. I'll just totally confess that online here because, you know, I, 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 I have a fun story that I'm looking forward to sharing one day. But, you know, I was at this party and, you know, I was doing these tarot readings and this one gal, you know, she took me by the hand and she's like, you are worthy of being paid. It is very important that you ask for payment for everything that you do. And it was something very magical about this, these words that this woman spoke to me that made me realize I can totally leave this group. That they, at one point, I wanted to help them, but most, not all, but most were just, they were just interested in partying. They were just interested in burying their emotions. They weren't interested in actual growth. And, you know, I finally got to the point where it's like, 
I'm getting no reciprocity that makes sense for what it is that I'm doing. And I needed to elevate out of that collective, elevate out of that karmic habit that I put myself into because I finally healed. I went into that lifestyle because I did see that card of polyamory a little bit earlier because that's very personal for me. I needed to go into that lifestyle in order to recover something that I had lost when it came to my sexuality, my sense of self-worth. And once I found it, it was a no brainer to actually leave. Like that's kind of the lovely thing about the journeys that we're on. Like we find it and we realize I got exactly what I needed out of it. And you don't need to feel guilty. There are plenty of people in the world outside of the communities that you are leaving that they're going to be needing your help. If you are still required with these um, with these groups, with these family dynamics, even with this job, like you would still be remagnetized it from a soul, like from a soul level, you would find that magnetism. But once you heal, you don't need it. And it's so succinct, especially as I sit in this energy. As you're able just to, first of all, pat yourself on the back. You've seen through something. I really want to emphasize, you've seen through something. You've spoken up for yourself. You're starting to recognize that, wait, I have something very valuable and I can't just give away the farm to anyone who has a sad story. As you heal, you can have some compassion for these other people, but recognizing they're not ready for you. You know, oh, phenomenal cosmic powers, itty bitty living space. Um, realizing that your energy has been wasted on people that aren't willing to learn and grow, realizing that you are learning and you are growing, you're finding yourself new roots, you're finding yourself new land, you're finding yourself a new way of being. Many of you will be finding a brand new home, others of you are going to find new community, others will be finding new love and finally be able, I just saw one, two, three again on the clock, being able to finally move forward on your own terms, not in that karmic way that can be a little bit ball busty, but going from a heart-centric space where you can actually just speak your truth without fear of reprisal. How are you going to feel as you come into to these 2024 energies? We got the star along with the Ace of Swords. Like, whoo, we did see the star in the pre-shuffle. And I do like that we have clarity. You're starting to see something. Like, your gift is just to see. I was talking about 2024, using it as your entertainment, if you will, being able to finally look at the situations that you're in. Like if you were a comedy writer, like, you know, how would this make a really funny story? If you want to be um, a spiritual teacher, how is your experience in this particular lesson going to be relevant to the person that you're speaking towards like you're being encouraged be experimental because if you're not deriving any type of growth or hope from it it's not for you it was never for you you were co-manifesting with somebody who was in pain you were co-manifesting with someone who was in lack now that you've been able to have that disconnection detachment it's giving you a chance to see the pe see people's pain for what it is, not to feel guilty, but it gives you a chance to feel autonomous and it gives you a chance to give people space in a way that actually doesn't harm you anymore. What's spiritual clarity on this? The sovereign with the engineer at the base, uh, at the base, pardon me, uh, in the shadow aspect. Reliance on mechanistic solutions without regard for emotional consequences. <sighs> I, I forgive my rant. If you are someone of higher education, I will pre-apologize. You are uh, an exception to this particular rant that Barry's wants to be in right now. It profounds, it baffles me, Barry's, how folks who can have high education, smart, intellectual people, how they can be so fucking dumb. There's something about learning how to gauge emotional intelligence versus being able to just read the books and quote them verbatim. Ooh, I'm very sorry for anybody where you may feel as though I could be attacking your education. First of all, you're smarter than me. I'm totally willing to admit that. But this is also when I was saying we have two page of pentacles and I've said it multiple times, the page of swords 
like reads and quotes verbatim, but doesn't understand the soul behind it. This is doctors learning how to become intuitive on top of the education that they have worked hard to earn. You know, I've had my problems with doctors in the past, I'm having problems with doctors right now of a non-medical nature, but it does really help even for myself as berries, being in this energy, just realizing that we can't just depend purely on somebody's piece of paper as to what value they can actually bring. It is important to have these certifications. It is important in many cases to have education and standardization because, you know, doctors, like if you're working with somebody who is medical, it is, <laughs> you want them to understand, you know, the DSM-5. You want them to understand how medicine works. That stuff's important. Important, but this is also having this revolutionary turnaround where it's not just knowing the theory, but it's experiencing and understanding the spirit of what it is they have been trying to learn versus having to go everything via gospel. This is getting out of a legalistic interpretation of scripture, a legalistic interpretation of, you know, medical um, medical journals, recognizing that it is important that we do capture things on a consistent level, but we need to have breathing room for the things that we do not know and finding that healthy place so that we're not succumbed to conspiracy, that we're not succumbed to misinformation, and that we're not succumbed to doubting our own intuition when we come across these doubting energies. You're healing. This is really giving you a chance to be independent, whether it's doing your own independent research or just recognizing that if somebody's right in front of you, even though they have the scripture down, but you know that the soul aspect of it is missing, that, you know, you can still show them respect. You can still, you know, politely bow yourself out of these particular energies. But now that you've seen it, you can actually magnetize people into your life who in this case have the ability to create, to give creative energy, a practical expression, talent for designing resolutions to common dilemmas. This is finally being able to encounter people who can problem solve, being able to take the rules of the 3D and being able to almost magically retransmute it in a very unique way. This has nothing to do with you judging other people, but it is very important to perceive this energy healthfully. And at the end of the day, this is you taking ownership. If you got all of the degrees, well then what do you wanna do with it? It's more, there's great value that you're gonna be able to show your patients, to your clients, to your friends, to your family, to your colleagues. When you can think outside of the box that you were taught in, school is just the beginning. It's the seed that is planted and it's up to you to decide how you wish to cultivate it, how you wish to grow, but also not limiting yourself. If, I, if you were just trained in one thing, well, it doesn't mean you can't branch out and do something else. Even my art teacher, in high school. Um, she was awesome. She encouraged all of us. She's like, no, if you want to go and get a fine arts degree, be my guest, but make sure that you learn other things while in school. In her case, she had a minor in zoology, even though she had a, uh, she majored in teaching because she loves animals. Like she adores animals and did the most beautiful paintings of all kinds of zoo creatures. Like what is it about your education and your soul passion that's going to be able to coalesce and make something brand new? Because that's your hint. That's your clue. That's the pinpoint that divine is asking you to really thoughtfully consider as you move into this next calendar year. So, okay, I'm being drawn towards the Wizard of Azanon, like some real high vibing shit. This has been a really rough reading, like between dealing with exhaustion, having to say some things that feel very uncomfortable, even for berries, because I've said a lot of things that have got me ostracized out of groups. I've been accused of all the is is isms. Um, I have been canceled. I have been, have been humiliated. I have been treated like shit, and I've been called all kinds of names my entire life. And I've had to come full circle, even though I'm still presenting myself on a public platform, that 
Some things are worth saying out loud as long as it is from a space of honest truth and being able to show people what I have noticed through my own personal experiences because the surface level is not enough anymore. Just coming up with labels isn't enough anymore. Anyone can come up with a label, but can two parties be on the same vibration that they can be in agreement as to what the soul contract of that is supposed to be? So I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to cut this. We'll find out in a second. We do have the seal of harmonic order, harmony, cooperation, dynamic interaction. Like I was saying soul contract. There are people that you still have karmic soul contracts with, but you're also bringing in your soul tribe. Like note the number 13. The way that I see the 13 as the lost soul tribe is that if you have a wheel with 12 points, much like a clock, that has 12 points on it, the very center focal point, that is you. That is you starting your own ministry. That is you starting your own collective. That is you being able to stand at a fixed point and being able to look at your soul tribe from 12 degrees of separation and understanding that they have their own perspectives, they have their own abilities, and that as it's needed, you guys can exchange information with each other. That's harmony. That's harmonization. Because after that, we have the cosmic calibrator, universal attunement, repatterning, guidance. The person who you were leaving 2022, going into 2023, like that person's gone. They like they're dead. They don't exist anymore. You've embraced way more change over this past calendar year that I think if you brought up a, if you brought up a journal, if you brought up something from last year, an old text message, an email, you may realize that person a year ago is alien to you. This is all about you being able to rewrite your own personal soul encoding so that you are pursuing the things that are new, unique, and different. The world is going to be craving stuff that is new and stuff that resonates with the soul. They're not ready for you yet. So that means there's absolutely no hurry in understanding why it is that you are here versus what it is you can do about it. And after that, we have the dimensional planes of perception, linear sequencing, hierarchy, time, logic, you know, on the days, you know, in the next, like, you know, the next few months, next few years, I'm hearing, like, having a sense of humor as to what divine order is supposed to be, what divine timing is supposed to be. There are things that, you know, if you're magnetized towards, it's just an adventure. It's for your own knowing. It is for your own good. Being able to be cold about the situations, but not locked off from your heart, realizing that other people are allowed to go through whatever it is that they need to go through releasing them on their journey, realizing, no, I'm not being a karmic bitch about it. I just know that I am not capable of helping. You can still pray for these people. Pray that they do find the right people on their path. You know, whether if it's they come back into your energy at some point down the road, or they jettison off and do their own thing, but they find the right people <laughs> who are far, far away from you. I am very drawn to the purple and the green right now. That's a very fluorite energy. That's connecting your thoughts, the crown chakra to your heart. It's a very cleansing crystal. So if you have fluorite kicking around um, and you like working with crystals, you are being highly recommended to take advantage of these beautiful energies. And lastly, anodine and thiamine, duality, contrast, trust, balance. If you still are coming across your doppelgangers or coming across stories about, you know, the mirrored version of self, like, have fun with it. Play with it. Be kind to yourself. But you guys are learning how to go cave splunking in the shadow. It's an aspect that a lot of people, they're afraid to go into because they think it is karmic, but there's something very playful, fun, and joyful that you're going to be able to teach other people in the world. They're not going to thank you in the immediate term for whatever it is you're going through right now, and that's okay. Leave them to whatever it is that they need to do. You're making choices for yourself. You're finally becoming the adults. You're starting to come into your own inner union, your own personal foundation. Keep grounding in the person who you are. Fall in love with this idea of finding your own soul purpose. Get to know your gifts because they are powerful and they need to be used with great wisdom. And you will be able to start magnetizing the right people 
your right soul tribe, those who can support you, encourage you, guide you, and release you when it's time to go on your own way. This gets to be about you. Get ready for 2024 because this gets to be about self. This gets to be about unity. This gets to be about harmony. And I'm really looking forward to growing with you guys in the following months. I'm just saying. Whew. Well, whoever you guys are, damn. I sincerely hope that this helped. Well, thank you again, everyone, for sticking around. Oh, if you like this reading, please make sure to like it on the way out. If you're kind of curious what the next message might be, I highly recommend that you subscribe. And until the next one, I'm wishing you peace, love, and all the berries. Love you guys. Take care.